Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I want to dissect the community's reaction to the Battlefield 5 trailer and reveal. Are people being ridiculous with their complaints, or has DICE made some massive mistakes with the new direction of the game? I certainly think there's a bit of both going on here, and we can get to the bottom of this with a little bit of analysis. So, what are the actual complaints to the trailer and reveal? Well, people complained about the cartoony, surreal nature in which combat is portrayed, the fact that British soldiers don't look like British soldiers, the presence of women in combat roles for the British Army, and the removal of the swastika emblem from the German forces. Let's start off by looking at the highly cartoonish nature of the combat sequences. We have silly decorations on the tank, the female soldier dying and respawning, jumping out of a window as a friendly tank smashes through the house on either side, narrowly missing falling debris from the bridge, aircraft crash landing mere feet away, a car fortuitously falling on an enemy soldier, the sliding and hip firing of a MG-42, grenades being shot out of the air and taking down a German BF-109, and the V-1 flying bomb throwing everyone through the air. All of this happens through the eyes of one character in a little less than two minutes of an uncut sequence. Right now, the trailer on YouTube is a 50% upvotes, 50% downvotes. Compare that with the Battlefield 1 reveal trailer, which has a 98% upvote rating, and you know that DICE made some pretty big mistakes with their new style. Now, a reveal trailer is designed to show off new graphics and features. The Battlefield 1 trailer, even though it used many cinematic angles, it does start off with subtle text on screen that says, Game Engine Footage, meaning that the graphics and animations we see are actual in-game graphics, not exaggerated for the trailer. The new Battlefield trailer starts off with a steady cam like shot dynamically moving around the characters in an action sequence with no reference of whether or not it's actual gameplay or a pre-rendered sequence. So when we transition to the first person gameplay, it's unclear if what happened before is a representation of actual gameplay or if it was just a cinematic experience leading up to actual gameplay. Now, because the action sequence is one continuous cut trying to cram in a ton of new features, again, it becomes unclear that what we are seeing are in fact new features or just part of this Michael Bay-like action sequence. The point at where a soldier throws a magazine to our character is somewhat lost as a new feature because of this. The fact that you can now run and jump through windows or dive backwards and shoot a sniper rifle is also lost in this cinematic experience rather than absorbing these as new gameplay features. Also, at no point during this trailer is there a shot or sequence of events that feels like it could represent real war, like a real World War II event. There doesn't appear to be any existence of front lines or tactical movements throughout a battlefield. It's just pure chaos in all directions. The fact that we see the female soldier die and respawn mid-combat several times creates a weird juxtaposition of trying to decide whether or not this is immersive combat or a casual session of multiplayer. And then, of course, there is the Mad Max look of our characters. None of them appear to wear traditional uniforms and are all wearing blue face paint. They seem more like cartoonish mercenaries instead of soldiers. Especially the fact that the female character has a prosthetic arm and a long brown trench coat and barbed wire cricket bat. She just looks so ridiculous and completely kills the feeling that this is somehow a World War II or a borderline authentic World War II game. Now many people, and even DICE, have defended the ridiculous nature of this trailer by referencing some of the crazy videos of past Battlefield games, like the iconic Rendezouk jet shot and Flame Trooper uh, standing on the back of a galloping horse in Battlefield 1. And yes, it is true that Battlefield games have often allowed for some crazy stuff to happen when people break the physics engine or push it to the extreme. DICE never designed Battlefield to allow for a Rendezouk, and they never designed the game to support flamethrower troopers to stand on horses. These are all emergent behaviors that people figured out they could do after launch. I've never seen somebody perform a Rendezouk while playing a game of Battlefield, nor have I seen a flame trooper standing on a galloping horse. 
I know it can happen because they've become memes, but in my hundreds and thousands of hours of playing Battlefield games, I don't see most of these crazy only in Battlefield moments. There are some cool crazy moments that happen on occasion, but most of them are more believable, like shooting the pilot out of a biplane while I'm on the back of a galloping horse in Battlefield 1. That's cool, that happened to me in Battlefield 1 and I remember that, but it was like a one-time thing. I know that's probably not gonna happen too often for me in game and it's a special moment for me, but I don't need a trailer or a portrayal of Battlefield saying, look, these crazy things are gonna happen to you all the time in game. I want the trailer to show me realistic action and I know that on occasion something crazy might happen. It's the realistic portrayal of the combat that appeals to me about Battlefield and I think it's the appeal to many players of the game. Now if you're a marketing guy and you spend a lot of time on Reddit or Twitter trying to get an idea of what Battlefield players like, you might forget that the majority of the Battlefield community doesn't play Battlefield for its wacky nature but instead plays it for the immersive combat experience and team-based strategy. Aspects of Battlefield that this trailer make you question if those things will even be in the next game. None of the combat was even remotely strategic or realistic, and the characters in over-the-top action broke any sense of immersion. That's why I personally thought the trailer was a terrible representation of what Battlefield has always been about, and frankly, I wish this discussion didn't go any further beyond what I've already talked about. But unfortunately, there have been some more petty arguments that I feel have muddied up some of the more important arguments being made about the trailer and the representation of Battlefield. Now, out of all the ridiculousness going on in this trailer, so many complaints have been about the fact that there's a female character fighting for the British Army and how that's not realistic. Now, of course, it doesn't help that she looks more like Furiosa than a British soldier. I complain that she looks ridiculous, not that she is a woman. Plenty of women served and fought in World War II, and even if they weren't prominent on the front lines of the British military, they certainly played a big role and even many combat roles for other countries. I watched an amazing movie about a female Russian sniper with 309 confirmed kills in World War II one of the biggest badasses of the entire war. If DICE wants to fudge the historical accuracy a little bit and suggest that there could have been female British soldiers capable of the same thing, I have no problem with that. Especially since I'm totally fine with Battlefield 1 using weapons that were never prominently uh, featured or used during World War 1 or even letting other factions use weapons that they didn't really use during the war. When tons of German soldiers run onto Battlefield 1 battlefields uh, using the Lee Enfields, you know it's not a gr highly realistic portrayal of the war, but at a glance it can feel realistic. The balance between realism and fun is a balance in which everyone has to find their own personal preference. To me, Battlefield has to feel realistic from an aesthetic perspective. If I look around and see British soldiers and one of them happens to be a woman, my immersion is not broken. However, if I look around and all the British soldiers are wearing tank tops with blue face paint, then my brain goes, uh, what war am I fighting in exactly? And I feel like the ridiculous portrayal of the woman in this trailer uh, is getting very much muddied up with the fact that she is a woman. And so, uh, unfortunately, that whole anti-woman argument is kind of hurting some of the more legitimate arguments, in my opinion. Now, as far as the designs of the soldier go, here is where I stand. The removal of premium for Battlefield games is possibly the biggest and best change the franchise has seen since Battlefield 3. This will make the game more open to everyone and force DICE to create awesome new content on a regular basis. The game will also be treated more like a service since it will be so tied into DICE's ability to generate profit. If the removal of premium means we need to accept the loss of some more realism when it comes to character designs, then I am okay with that trade-off. My hope though, and we've seen this proven with Battlefield 1 already, is that some of the more ridiculous cosmetic items will be locked behind uh, big time commitment assignments or just locked behind a very expensive 
purchase price. That way we will not see the majority of players running around with prosthetic arms or some of the more ridiculous face paint. Now lastly, as for the removal of swastikas from the game, from a business perspective, there are countries like Germany that have ban the symbol of the swastika. So DICE could either make multiple versions of the game or take the easier route and just remove it entirely. Especially since they're comfortable with bending the realism of the game with the portrayal of the characters, it seems like an easy step to remove the swastika. The swastika issue can be seen as a little bit tricky because it doesn't uh, or rather it hasn't been removed in other games like Wolfenstein. The difference is that you play a character defeating or killing Nazis in Wolfenstein and you're never uh, wearing the swastika and representing the swastika. In Battlefield 5, you will often be fighting for the Germans and if there were swastikas in the game, you would be wearing swastikas on your uniforms or vehicles. A lot of people would not want to represent that symbol even if it is a more cartoony, glorified take on the war. I put myself in that camp. We can always take a step back from the situation and look at it logically and just say it's a symbol that represents a largely hate-fueled German faction responsible for the biggest genocide in history, but people have these things called emotions and simply put, there's just too much emotional pain tied into that symbol. DICE knows they're not making a historical documentary or a realistic portrayal of World War II, and if removing the swastika opens the game up to a larger audience and mitigates them from, from having to deal with tons of social drama, then of course they're going to do it. You can argue the political correctness of this decision all you want, but from a business standpoint, it is without question the safer option, and frankly, I have no issues with it. Anyway, that's how I feel about all the Battlefield 5 reveal event drama. Hopefully I covered all the major issues that people were curious about. I'd love to know in the comments what you guys think and feel about the things I've talked about here. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.